Hello everyone, it is Teacher Marianne here from HelloTeacherMarianne.com and on this channel you'll find videos all about helping you earn an income from home by teaching online where I'm bringing to you valuable tips, insight, and need to know information. This video is all about tips for teaching your out school classes. What do you need to know to do before, during, and after your classes to help you be successful. Before we go any further, I wanna let you know that I have an OutSchool freebie. It'll be linked below, as well as you can go to helloteachermarianne.com and grab it there. My think through guide for your OutSchool classes. It's going to help you narrow down or expand your thinking to what should you teach on OutSchool. If you've not signed up to teach on OutSchool, but you are interested in teaching for OutSchool, I have my link below. If you want to use my link and become one of my referrals, we do offer once a week training via Zoom. We also offer a Facebook group where we offer lots of encouragement, as well as do some Facebook Lives a couple of times a week to answer your questions there. If you've not already, please go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell so you'll know when my next video comes out. And let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to tell you is what I do before class. So before each of my out school classes, I actually keep a sticky note taped to the monitor of my computer screen. And this sticky note has my reminders that I need to um, do before every class. The first thing on my reminder is test my audio and speakers. I always do that first. So I always um, go into class about 10 minutes early uh, and test my audio and speakers. The next thing on that sticky note is to enable the chime for enter and exit. So when students come into a class, they're not just sitting in a waiting room and I don't know they're there. I can actually hear the chime and let them into the classroom. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, be sure to check out my video all about using Zoom for out school. The next thing on my sticky note is to have my resources pulled up on my computer. Now what I mean here is that if you are planning to use the share screen option on OutSchool, which means you can show video clips or a PowerPoint presentation, or for me personally, I do the Google Slides presentations. Uh, sometimes I just pull up a story that we read together. Uh, whatever you're wanting to show in class, if you are wanting to show something on your computer screen, you, you need to go ahead and already have it open on your computer screen. If you don't have those resources open, whether it's one or four, I always have four things open on my computer because I go through four different pieces or four different resources for the different games and activities that we do in our classes. So if I don't have all of those open, when I go to hit share screen, I'm not going to see what I need. In the little box that comes up when you hit share screen at the bottom, if those resources aren't open, then you will not see them in the box. And then you're going to have to say, I'm so sorry, one moment, let me find what I'm looking for. And you're going to have to shrink the class down and go to your computer and pull it up. It just takes away valuable seconds from your class time. It also kind of puts a halt in the momentum that you have when you start your class. So you just don't want any dead time or I, I personally don't like any seconds that are wasted having to do anything um, with class management or resource management, tech management. I like for that to flow as smoothly as possible so that students get the most out of class time with me. And in addition to the a Zoom whiteboard, because I do use that every lesson as well. I also use my physical whiteboard at the end, so I need to have that, make sure that's cleaned off and ready and a good Expo marker next to it. So those are some tips of what you need to do before class, just kind of what you need to think through. The, the last thing that I do and that I always have sitting right next to my computer is my actual lesson plan. This is not the class description that you sent to OutSchool to approve. This is an actual lesson plan because after you send in your lesson, your class to submit for approval, then you, you need to think through, how am I going to teach that class? OutSchool does provide a lesson plan template, and I, I, I haven't used it, but I've seen it, and it's kind of what I already do, think through. But it's just kind of think through, how are you going to introduce yourself? 
uh, what's going to be the initial icebreaker? Um, what activities are you going to do? How is this going to be interactive and engaging? So I actually write out a lesson plan for every class. And then after I've taught that class a few times, I don't have to go exactly by that lesson plan. I just then bullet point out the major points of that lesson that I am going to hit. Okay, so now that you are ready to begin, let's go ahead and talk about how you begin class once your students are in class and you are in class first of all let's go back and as you are letting students into class you have the option of whether you want to mute students upon entry or not i personally never mute them upon entry i have them unmuted now a lot of times parents will go ahead and mute themselves as they come in the parents will mute the children rather as they come into class and that's fine but i don't mute them if they want to say hello to each other i don't have my camera on at this point i don't turn my camera on until about a minute before class time and so i can go ahead and begin greeting students as i'm letting the others trickle in but i let them stay unmuted and i let them talk to each other and greet each other and it's so cute because most of them will just say hello and some of them are shy and won't talk back, but it's just really cute. And then as they come into class, rather, I greet them one by one. Now, because I have my sticky note with their names on it, I know who is a returning student. And basically, I know this anyway because I recognize them and because I have them every week. But I have who is a returning student and who is a new-to-me student. I will... Uh, greet them each by name. Just, um, you know, hello, Faith. It's so great to see you again. Hello, Clive. I'm so glad you joined us today. Welcome to our class. And so you just kind of give a little different personal meaning. One of my students had a birthday. Hello, Hannah. How was your birthday? Happy late birthday. Just kind of put a little personal but quick greeting to each student. You don't want to take up too many minutes in the beginning, especially if your class is only, you know, 25, 30, even 45 minutes or an hour. You don't want to take up too much time greeting students. And so I found what works best for me is just a quick hello, that little personal hello, and then I'm moving on. And so after I give my introduction, I say hello, and the students can say hello back to me, then I go ahead and mute everyone. And I say, okay, everyone, everyone is muted. I'm going to talk now. When I call your name, I will unmute you. You will have to press unmute. When I call your name, press unmute. Everybody give me a thumbs up if you understand. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Great, good job. And then we will get started in our lesson. I keep the students muted until I need to call them one by one, except for one or two activities towards the end of class. So once they've gotten the hang of only talking out when I call their name because I unmute them when I call their name, towards the end of class, we play a little game and I say, okay, for this game, I really want everyone unmuted. Let's see if we can unmute everyone. But if I hear noise, I'll just go ahead and mute you. And that seems to have worked really well. So let's talk about what happens during the lesson or just let's talk about some tips that I've learned for during the lesson. I would say the first number one thing that I've learned for teaching out school classes is that you definitely need to over plan. What I thought would take 30 minutes in the beginning, I thought I had a lot of, of stuff planned. And for some of those groups, it didn't take long at all. And so I was kind of like, oh my goodness, I need to extend, I, I, we've got to do something else. And at that point in the very beginning, I didn't have Google slide presentations or games created because I had not gotten that far, I had not learned how to do that myself yet. And so it was a struggle and I just was like, oh my goodness, if anybody comes back after these classes, <laughs> it's kind of how I felt. Like I really wanted to go in there and do my very best for these parents and for these learners and it's just those first few lessons I really had to dig deep and analyze and be honest and say okay you can do way better than this let's let's do this again 
and I changed it and I just tweaked and tweaked and tweaked every single lesson and I still tweak and then I, I finally to the point where I've got my ongoing class working really well and I feel like I'm, I'm really happy with those lessons now but what I had to do was really beef up the student engagement and really beef up the activities and add a couple of games in there I just teach 30 minute classes and really most of mine are 25 minute classes, but I can still do six or seven activities where those kids are highly engaged the entire time. One way that I do this is I have really decreased the teacher talk in my lesson and so this is a big tip, don't talk too much. Just like uh, in the regular classroom where you want these kids to be engaged and you really want to, to be getting a lot of output from them, same thing, you really want that output, that student output. And if you're talking too much, they kind of you know wander, especially the littles, but uh, let's be honest, all ages, they kind of wander. You know, They start thinking about other things, they get distracted. Talk as little as you need to talk and what I found personally is that if I talk just as little as I need to, just, you know, explain the activity and, you know, lots of encouragement, lots of praise. That's most of my talking, a quick explanation and then lots of praise after they practice. But the majority of it I want is for them to be practicing and them to be giving me responses. So cutting down on that teacher talk was huge for me and that's definitely something that I learned. I would say the two biggest things that I learned for during class, the actual lesson, is cut down on the teacher talk and beef up the student engagement exercises. And definitely over prepare. Prepare more than you think you'll be able to get to because I promise you with some groups you'll be able to get to it and you don't want to be left with five, six, seven minutes until the class ends and you've done your entire lesson plan. I would rather have three activities that we didn't get to planned just in case. Now sometimes, I wanna go back to the introduction of class, sometimes I will say, okay guys, we're going to, you know, after I say hello, welcome, and do all of that, I'm going to let everybody say their name and one thing about themselves. And so this, one thing this kind of does is, maybe if I'm unsure of a pronunciation of someone's name, I will um, I'll get that clear pronunciation from them when they say their name. So they say their name and one thing about themselves. Now, that ha that works well in some classes, and for some classes it doesn't work, work very well because either they're too young uh, and they can't really think and it'll take too, too much time for them to think of something to, that they wanna readily tell the class, or maybe they're at that you know kind of stage where things feel a little bit awkward, maybe they're a little bit older, maybe tween, early teen stage where they're not as comfortable talking out. Now maybe it's not their age, maybe it's just they're not used to the um, online setting or whatever it is, there are some kids that are more shy and there are some kids that just love to talk so you kind of have to, have to gauge it based on um, what you know if you've had them before or um, how they respond to your um, greeting and that sort of thing. You just read your students. But invariably, you will always have a couple of students who love to talk and who definitely want to, want to talk to you throughout the lesson. And I love this. I love students who want to talk to me. However, as you know, you've got to get through your lesson content. That's the most important objective is that those kids are learning something valuable in that class as well as having fun. So for those little students who, or, or the older students who just want to raise their hand and they want to just tell you something else, can I tell you one more thing? Can I tell you one more thing? Then I just always, I've just learned to say, you're going to tell me one thing. And then if you have anything else to tell me, tell me after class. I'll stay a few minutes after class with you and you can tell me. And then at the end of class, you can dismiss everyone else and if they need to go and you can let your students share. If they didn't feel like they got enough share time, you know, from something personal that they wanted to share with you at the end. And that's worked well for me too. Sometimes you will have to say, I see your hand. Remember, I'm going to let you share in just a few minutes, okay? And then just keep moving on. Let me go back to the mute issue for just a second. So because right now the way Zoom has it, uh, because they added in the security feature, when you mute students, you, you have the ability to allow students to unmute themselves. You can press yes or no. 
I always say <clears throat> no. I always check the no box because if I just mute students, then I always have one or two who will automatically unmute themselves. But if I have no checked, then they can't unmute themselves until I unmute them from my end. And so that has worked best in my classes. So that's one tip with the, the mute unmute. And I just wanted to also say that I have tried in several classes leaving everyone unmuted. And I've had some classes where it worked really well in. What I found though in the majority of my classes is that there is at least for one student, there is background noise and it can be distracting because that's kind of what you zone in on when you hear unfamiliar sounds or you hear something going on in the background. Maybe parents are talking or dogs are barking or, you know, TV is going, whatever is happening. Um, you can hear it and that's kind of distracting to the lesson. So what I found is it's just best to mute everybody after I introduce myself. When I start the actual teaching just to explain I'm going to mute you and when it's your turn to talk I'll unmute you but one tip that I want to give here is make sure you always say now everybody think of this answer I don't know who I'm going to call. So if I automatically call Bella and then I ask Bella the question then a lot of times the other kids are just kind of zoned out. Oh, it's not my turn to talk. But one tip is you can ask the question first or you can say first who am I going to call for this question? I don't know. Everybody be thinking, ask the question, and then call the student name last so that they never know who you're going to call on. Now, in a lot of my classes, I just go in order because we go quickly. We've I've learned to go quickly in class, and it keeps everybody engaged because we move quickly, and that works too. But, you know, just kind of a tip that you can try. I just don't ever want to risk someone not being uh, completely satisfied with the class due to the fact that I didn't manage the noise level. That is something that I can pretty much manage with the mute button. I know there are some sticky issues there, but at least I can uh, do my best to manage that with the mute button. So I don't want to risk a bad review or more importantly, I don't want to risk someone not having a good experience because of someone else's background noise. Okay, and then I just end my class. Something that started in one of in my very first class was it was about animal adjectives. And so I brought my little dog. I brought her to class and at the very end of class and I let the kids say hello and they just loved it. And so I've had some repeat students that have asked about Maggie. So it has just become a thing now that if you do a good job, I'll let my furry friend say hello at the end of class. Some of you know who I'm talking about. Out. some of you don't and so it's kind of a fun you know end of class way to leave that's kind of how I leave the class I I will just say um, something like you all did such a great job I'm going to bring my furry friend and I always have her right in her kennel next to me when I'm teaching so I can just grab her and hold her in front of the screen but I'm always sure to say be sure to check out my other classes. I have lots more classes on OutSchool that I would love to see you in. They might be young or they might be older, but whatever age they are, chances are their parent might be close by or their parent might review the lesson. And so I want parents to know I have other classes. This is not my only one. And then we do high fives all around or pat yourself on the back. It's really fun and that's kind of ha the happy note that we end class on. Okay guys, I hope these tips were helpful for you. Remember, you can do it. It might change your life. And I'm your biggest cheerleader. Bye-bye.